Okay, please go ahead. Thank you. So community hours, just to give you a little bit of background as to what it is that we do and, and why it is that we do it. Um, it was set up a number of years ago, five years ago, by um, Karen Landy and Marina Constance when they realized that their children who were required to do volunteering as part of their O curriculum, um, all the IAB schools require that uh, learners complete certain amounts of, of community engagement as part of their LO requirement for their matric portfolio. Um, and so Karen and Marina established that it was really difficult to find volunteering opportunities that was appropriate, age appropriate, um, for their children to participate in. And so it became evident that they were not the only people struggling um, and so banded together to create some opportunities for the youth um, which then expanded to, to the program that we have today. So the project was piloted initially with St. John's, and we're very proud to say that St. John's is still a part of the program and has grown exponentially over the years um, to include up, up to date um, about 1,750 NGOs, NPOs, and organizations such as yourselves who have impact and who have footprint in different communities. So essentially what, what Community Hours does is a twofold, um, we offer a twofold system. One is of service to schools and the other is of service to the youth. The, if, and if I can say that that's part of a triangle, the, 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 the other part of the triangle is, is to provide service to communities, um, which is I know sort of where our conduit through yourselves has had wonderful impact. So in service to schools, what we do, and it's really just the Reader's Digest edition, is we provide accurate, accredited reporting for the schools, which we can drill down. And honestly, I can take you through the process that's not really of, of major value to yourselves, but we drill down to per learner, per organization, per um, set of hours. And in fact, we can even um, draw reports to say more specifically what it is that they did. So in the instance of working with, with your group, um, I know that the Meal in a Bag project has just exploded, which is just wonderful. Um, we would be able to say that specific students had provided meals in the bags on the following days, you know, in their following amounts. So that's essentially what we do to schools or for schools. The adjunct to that is that we are able to also provide to them internal service volunteering. So in some instances, schools like to monitor things like um, first aid, for example, or um, uh, interaction with Interact, for example. So we're able to, to facilitate that logging and tracking of hours as well. So that's the one component of what we do. The second component of what we do, and which is where I think that you have most interaction, is with our learners, with the students. So essentially the program was set up to meet the requirements of school-going um, learners. But what we have discovered is, is that university students are wanting to get involved and a number of different corporate clients are now looking to get involved and have been involved specifically around the Mandela Day activations, but are now looking for measurable impact. Um, and our system is able to provide that for them. So for the learners, they create their own profile. It's really important that everybody knows that we don't create that profile for the learners. They provide us with, with some personal information which we are obliged by the Puppy Act and which we live and die by the Puppy Act and we don't share that information with anybody else. But So they create their own profiles. After they've created their profile, what they are able to do is to log on to the system and search for volunteering opportunities. And those volunteering opportunities fall into a number of different categories. Um, it, for example, into service related to animals, to the community, to babies, education, environment, uh, seniors, and so on and so forth. At the beginning, well, in March of last year, when we were all grappling with the impact of the coronavirus, we created a specific um, volunteering opportunity called virtual volunteering, which 
to allow learners to volunteer from home in a safe and controlled environment, but still have impact in what we keep telling them is the real world. And that's where the conduit with organizations such as yourselves is so critical. I mean, that relationship is so important to community hours. So what the learners would do then is they would search for an opportunity which resonates with them. And I know that you've seen a number of those coming through, um, including the workbooks, the, um, the ABCs, the numeracy boards, um, and a number of different other projects. What we decided that we would try and do is to try and focus the virtual volunteering on um, the, the sustainability of, of people in terms of food scarcity, in terms of education, and in terms of comfort. And that's where, again, your organization has been tremendous in terms of the distribution of the toiletry packs, the care packs the food packs and the educational packs which have come through um, and obviously people are collecting and have been collecting clothing um, which they have been delivering to you. So for example let's say that a, um, a student comes and delivers 10 meal in a let's make it around, they get 12 meals in a bag to Bet on Better for example. They go to Nanine, they drop off their 12 meals in a bag. It is their responsibility to go onto their profile to log those hours. Once they've logged those hours, what happens is, is that I would get an email to say, hi, I have dropped off um, 12 meals in a bag to Nanine on this day. Their hours then sit on their profile as pending confirmation. The reason why we then come back to, to you with um, an email with an Excel little spreadsheet on it that says, Mary Ann delivered 12, uh, 12 meals in a bag uh, to Nanine on the 4th of December. Um, please would you verify the hours? Is because only on instruction from the organizations to confirm and verify that you have received what it is that the learners say that they have delivered to you. Only then do we verify the hours. The reason for that is, is that sometimes people, uh, recently this week, for example, I've got a wonderful young volunteer who's down in KwaZulu-Natal and she's made a whole lot of um, slippers um, from the knitting project that we've got, which she couriered to a senior citizen's home. When I went to verify those hours, the senior citizen home hasn't yet received those, um, those lovely slippers. I cannot verify those hours. The reason for that is, is because she tells me she's made six pairs of slippers, but what happens if she only remembered to send four? So I would only be able to verify four pairs of slippers on her profile for her. So we are really, really, really um, focused on, on making sure that all the hours which are verified on the platform are in fact accurate and verified. And the rationale behind that is, from a school's perspective, they frequently use the community hours data to assess leadership um, positions into schools. So for you know the prefecture and, and, and what have you um, for the following year. President's Award that I heard Nanine talking to you about accepts the, the community hours um, volunteering documentation as part of their um, accreditations as well. And for those learners who are looking to study overseas, specifically if they're looking to study in um, America and or, or Europe, England in particular, the community hours um, subscription or the community hours um, our documentation is verified and approved as a part of that uh, that process. So for those people who know young um, people who have wanted to go and study in the States, you know that no study application will be considered for a single moment without some form of um, a recognition of your community engagement and, and especially if you're going to be applying for a scholarship or a bursary. So that sort of forms the base of what it is the community hours does. But none of that would have any impact at all or meaning to be absolutely candid with you if we were not able to distribute the work that is done by the volunteers. And that is why the relationship with yourselves and organizations such as yourselves is paramount in, in completing this sort of triangle of community um, service and the management thereof. 
So whilst it's all about kindness and it's all really about people wanting to make an impact, at the end of the day, from the learner's perspective and from the school's perspective, if it can't be managed and it can't be measured, then the impact of what it is that's being done, unfortunately, is meaningless or has less meaning in terms of the school structure. And that's why I know it becomes a little bit painful to receive an email from us once a week, once every two weeks. It's really important that we do get the confirmation from yourself. And I must say that the CANs are one of the sets of organizations which is just brilliant, brilliant about getting back to us with the um, with the verification of ours. So that conversation we don't really even need to have with you. But the other thing that we need to align with um, with yourselves is to say, how do we load projects onto the Community Hours platform and how do we accredit ours? So what is quite difficult is, is that we have um, delay with our schools to say we won't give away hours we won't let people buy hours because some children come from quite enfranchised homes and they are able to sort of donate in abundance when it comes to, to money but that's not really community engagement um, in terms of, of, of what it is that we, we're trying to do money is wonderful and I know that you all need money and all are grateful for money and all want the money because their salaries to be paid and electricity has to be kept on and so on and so forth. But because of the um, the engagement that we have and the age group with, with, with whom we engage, we call financial donations goodwill donations and those goodwill donations do not carry with them um, hours. And I know that that sounds terrible, but it's what we have agreed with the schools. So. I'm afraid, you know, we just have to, to, to carry that through. So when you need to have a, um, a volunteering opportunity loaded on our system, there are two ways of doing that. You can either drop me an email, um, which is, to be honest with you, going forward is my preferred way of, of doing it. The reason for that is, is because if there are conversations that we need to have around what it is that you need or how many hours you believe, you should be accredited for a particular activity, um, we, we can have that right up front before we load the opportunity onto the, to the, pro, onto the uh, website. The website is available for everybody who has a profile with Community Hours to view. Uh, the Volunteering Hub is available for everybody um, who has a profile to view. What that really means is, is that both the learners and their parents have access to the Volunteering Hub. Uh, which means that at the moment um, we have got about 15,500 sets of eyes um, on the volunteering hub you know, from time to time, which is, is quite wonderful to think that parents are looking at, at the um, opportunities and are also supporting their children. So if you would like to drop me an email, it's very easy to do. You can send it to sarah at communityhours.co.za. Um, and I'll, I'll resend all of that through to you. I know that, Nanine, you've got my email address, but um, sarah at communityhours.co.za. Um, and really what I need to know is what you want, when you want it, how many you want, and specifically what that inclusion might look like. So what I will do is I'll send um, a template to whomever. Nanine, I can send it to you. I can send it to anybody. I can send it to the entire group if you like. Um, just to say, if you just populate that template, then I will be able to load those hours for you. So, just to give you an idea, the, um, I think that you may have seen the workbooks. Um, what that is, is um, it's the ABCs. We ask the children to print those out from their home computers. We do not require that they, that's printed out in color. I understand the cost implication of color printing. So, they print it in black and white. They staple it into a book format. And they um, give that little book or the ABC booklet together with um, a, a box of crayons, a small treat because every child likes a treat. And when I say a small treat, it really could be a small little box of Smarties, you know, that you get in a multi-pack. It could be um, a tube of pastels, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and a bar of soap. 
the rationale behind the bar of soap is that we are trying to get a bar of soap into as many young hands in um, the under-resourced areas as we possibly, possibly can. So we are stimulating um, the, the learning and we are stimulating a sense of how important it is to keep your hands clean. One of those projects would constitute one hour of volunteering. Um, and we, 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 we let the learners know that right up front. So when they go on to the volunteering hub and they look for volunteering opportunities, they will see, make a workbook, this is what you need to do, these are the steps that you need to follow, and these are the number of hours that you will get. Attached to that then, we give them a list of organizations that would be grateful to receive those workbooks. And that's where our critical relationship with yourselves comes in. Because if the community that you serve does not require the workbooks, then I'd really rather that we didn't put your name onto that list. Your communities might be desperate for the care packs, for the food packs, for the meal in the bag, for example. Um, you might, your communities might say, we are desperate for shoes, for clothing. And I mean, we can go on the examples are endless. But that's why it's really important that we are able to track that accurately um, and to make sure that we give the addresses and the times and days on which you accept those um, those donations. Um, the last thing that we want to do is to have people banging on your door at midnight, um, you know, because they, they've kept the things in their car now. Well, they can't be midnight anymore, not with the curfew. But, you know, half past eight at night as they're returning from a family dinner, banging on your door to say, please, can I you know, deliver these things to you? You might be tucked up in bed at that time. And, um, you know, I'm very mindful of, you know, your own privacy and how important that is. So if I just look at that triangle again then, our engagement is with our, our clients, which are the schools and the learners, and our, our partners, which are yourselves. And really that is what Community Hours does. What we were concerned about when last year came is that volunteers would sort of get into a state of either helplessness or apathy um, and I am so proud to say that the Community Hours volunteers last year, when we tracked the hours um, from January 2019 to January 2020, and then I tracked the hours again from March, I specifically looked from March to December, we only lost nine, sorry, 5,000 hours of volunteering throughout that entire period. And when I say lost, means that our, our numbers didn't track 5,000 hours short. But that, that, that kind of sounds like an oh my word, that's dreadful. Except when you look at the number of hours that were volunteered from March of last year to December of last year, collectively our youth, our volunteers, tracked five years of individual volunteering hours. And all of that, all of that was made possible by organizations such as yourselves who said we will take it into the communities we have that conduit we have that that link and we will make sure that all the hard work doesn't just sit on shelves and for that as i say we are incredibly incredibly grateful so that relationship circle between the schools the volunteers and yourselves is one which is sacrosanct and one that we are really 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 um focused on maintaining um, and we're really focused on making sure that at no stage does anybody feel like our learners or our volunteers have overstepped the mark and in a nutshell that's yeah. the reader's digest edition of what it is the community hours does and why it's so important for us to maintain the relationships with organizations such as yourselves because i think that it is very definitely you know it's a hand in glove situation so, have you got any questions? Come up in conversations amongst yourselves and in your own teams. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for that um, wonderful um, uh, presentation. Um, we're super happy to have you, and um, you know we're, we're we're a network, so we're not currently a formal organisation as such. Um, we'll see in future if we if we become one. Um, and I think there are quite a lot of um, plans that 
that are using community hours, but I know there are quite a few for who this is um, absolutely new. And so it sounds like it's, it's such a great opportunity um, for people to get familiar with this, to, to go on the website and explore a little bit. And, um, you know, um, it's, it, it's so interesting to know that we can also um, uh, ask community hours um, for a particular thing. Um, so, yeah, I, and I love that, um, you know, you have this kind of triangle between um, uh, clients, learners and organizations. Um, so, yeah, are there any questions? I just wanted to ask, um, I know some people have joined a little bit afterwards, and that's fine, we'll share the recording. Um, Emily, um, please go ahead. Thanks, Julie. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for um, taking the time again. I had a, a, a question. Um, I've, I've registered already. Would it be okay. appropriate for me to approach a high school near me? Um, I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be easier for me to let the school know that I'm nearby and I'm accepting uh, volunteers to do various um, things with me or do we leave it entirely the process to go through the website and they must find me? Um, Emily, um, the answer to your question is, is that the more engagement we get from schools, the more traction we are all going to have in terms of the the impact, you know, the social right. impact. May I ask what school it is that's close by to you? Because if they're on our profile already, then, you know, we could potentially just alert that specific school to let them know that you are in their area, that you are working um, with community hours and, you know, of, of the work that it is that you are specifically doing in, in the community that you serve. Perfect. I'll send you an email. Thanks ever so much. That's great. Thanks. Um, Sarah, if I can ask um, a question. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, are you about to maybe just take us to the website and walk us through the, the very basics of how to register from uh, if you've got um, an NPO or I don't know if you accept voluntary associations, um, you know, um, to register from that point of view um, and set up uh, sort of tasks or I'm not sure how it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, our website is going to be re-engineered during the first quarter of this year. So I'm not going to, I can take you through the website and give you sort of an idea of, of how people find opportunities with the greatest pleasure. But I think that what my best thing to do is, um, in the short term, is it's, it's a really swift process for me to upload each of you um, on our system with the greatest of pleasure. So if anybody is interested in having your plan or your organization, um, NPO, NGO, whatever it is that, that you specifically manage, load it onto the Community Hours system, please would you just drop me an email. And what I will do is today, I will just send you the simple, it's a, it's a Word document that I would ask you to fill in um, and then just return it to me. And literally by the, where are we today, Thursday, um, I will have it loaded for you by the end of the week. I just know that I've got a couple of presentations this, this week um, that take me literally off site. But with the greatest of pleasure, that's the best thing to do in the short term. If you have um, a logo um, or a, a picture that you particularly are associated with um, in terms of your individual activities, please let me know um, and send that through to me. And the other thing that I would love to ask for your support in is that we ask our young volunteers to please send us photographs of the work that they are doing. So I have phenomenal photographs of countless young volunteers with fabulous amounts of sandwiches that they've engaged in and so on and so forth. And, but what we don't have is the delivery of those products into the community. Now, I am very sensitive about what's you know, sort of, sort of being referred to as poverty porn. I'm very sensitive to that. So I am not asking that you would take photographs of 
you know, horrible, insensitive photographs of, of, of children in awful circumstances, you know, begging for, for the sandwiches that you're delivering. But if they are celebratory photographs that we are able to share on our Facebook and on our Instagram, um, to reignite that wonderful sense of, oh my word, this is the impact of my sandwich. I'd love to have those. I'd really love to have those. So even if it is a photograph of you with what it is that you're going to go and deliver on a particular day or you going into a community or a community leader that you work with who doesn't mind a photograph being taken, we'd love to have those photographs. It's a really nice way to say thank you to you, but it's also a really nice way to say to our young volunteers what you do might seem simple in the context of doing it in your own home, but it's really important in terms of what it is that the impact that your single sandwich has. And I always say to people that that single sandwich may be the only thing that somebody may have to eat on any particular day. So never underestimate the power of a sandwich. Um, and it's lovely to get the end result photos. So if you don't mind, it, it would be my personal request to you um, to just you can take them on your phones you can send them through to me my whatsapp you can send them through to me on the email i really don't mind but just giving us permission to use them on um on the social media if that's okay okay um so as um and as cans um i know that we have a, a policy against um any kind of undignified photos as well and what we usually ask people um is to blur the faces um or or somehow um maybe crop out the faces of anyone who is receiving um assistance um and if you are there with um uh you know fellow community organizers um, or um, peers, you know, of course, um, your faces can be included. Um, uh, but yeah, um, th there is a, a sort of unspoken power dynamic uh, when, uh, you're, okay, um, you, when you have people uh, okay. um, receiving some something. So even if, you know, they have given you permission um, to take a photo, it, it's sometimes that they feel that they can't say no or perhaps, you know, they don't know that later that could be seen or used by someone else. And we just try to respect everyone's privacy um, and try not to include faces. But there's many creative ways that you can take photos. Um, you can take photos of the food or the goods that you're delivering. Um, you know, there's um, lots of ways to, to show the work without doing that. Um, and yes, I think we'll be happy um, uh, I think the cans will be happy to share um, photos of, of, of the work. Great. Are there any other questions? Um, please don't feel shy and please just unmute yourself or raise your hand. I'm so sorry. I know that um, for some reason um, people were struggling to get in. So if you, if you, um, yeah, if there's something you missed that you're unclear on, um, uh, please go ahead. And if you would prefer to drop me an email, that's also absolutely fine. I know that so frequently what happens is, is that I, you know, leave a situation and I think, oh, I should have asked this or, you know, that was something that I wanted to get clarity on. And please, you're very, very, very welcome to drop me an email. Um, and again, my email address is simply my name and where I work. So it's Sarah at Community Hours and it is an S um, at the end. So Sarah at Community Hours and I'd be very, very, very happy to answer any questions that you might have individually. Love what I am going to try and do is just show it. We have a question from um, Constance and Emily. Um, Constance, sure. please go ahead. Hi, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to find out, is it okay if uh, one of my kids do assist me and then they do get hours because sometimes I do work with my kids. So I just went, I was just wondering and then want to find out if that's okay or it should be like learners from particular schools. No, 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 no. Um, it's a great question and thank you for ans asking that one, Constance. So um, I'm going to answer your question in two ways if you don't mind. The first thing is, is that 
um, Community Hours is a subscription-based volunteering platform. So what that means is that we, each of our, of our volunteers pay 250 Rand a year to be on the platform, and what that does is gives them the access to all the volunteering opportunities, it tracks their hours, does the job that, that we've discussed you know, during this, this conversation today. So that's what they pay. I am, however, very cognizant of the fact that without organizations such as yourselves, and more in more particular, people such as yourselves, we would not be able to have the impact that, that we have. Ooh, in loads of photos through, maybe they're funny. Um, so if you would like, I would be very happy um, to give your children, your biological, your, your, your immediate family, so your children, complimentary access to community hours. So then they would be able to track their own, they would be able to create their own profile and they would track their own hours and log them on our um, on our, our platform as well. So Constance, um, with, with the greatest of pleasure, um, drop me an email, we'll sort that out for you with pleasure. Um, Emily, we also have a question. Hi, I've had a look at the various categories of, of stuff and I'm wondering around the, are there limitations on the kinds of things we can ask um, volunteers to do? I'll give an example. We, we, when we're going at full steam, we distribute sort of every week um, to at least two, 300 people. Mm -hmm. And our distribution setup on the day is is efficient and we've got in, sort of enough volunteers but it takes us absolute ages to clean up afterwards we all do it yes are there limitations in terms of you can't ask volunteers to clean or to do x uh, or um, I, I, what am I trying to say? I suppose I'm... I, no, I, no, I hear you completely. And the they do the crummy jobs they, as well. They can indeed. <laughs> they can indeed. So, look, we would ask you not to, I mean, you know, again, I mean, it, it's an unreasonable scenario I'm painting, but please don't call them in at midnight to, you know, scrub floors in the mortuary. We prefer that you can do that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, really, we prefer to do that. But, um, so... The, the cleaning up process, the production process, the packing process, all of that is 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 something that we would be able to request that the learners do. Um, and for some people, and, and please, it's not a gender thing in particular, but sometimes boys say, all of this sounds a bit soft. You know, they would really rather be loading things into cars. They would really rather be, no. you know, active, you know, in terms of their volunteering. The only thing, and I know I'm preaching to the converted, so please, I, I'm saying this only to you know because it makes me feel better about myself, is that we are we are vigilant about saying to the children, you have all volunteers, you have to wear a mask, you have to observe all um, COVID-related protocols related to health and safety, and we would look to you to guide that. I mean, that's really important to us. Um, so yeah, with the greatest greatest of pleasure. So if you if you need people to help you sort stuff for argument's sake let's say you deliver on a thursday um, into the community and you start sorting on a wednesday afternoon for argument's sake if you wanted to invite young volunteers to assist you to sort on a wednesday afternoon between three o'clock and five o'clock and again pick a time anytime we would very happily put that up onto the website for you with the greatest of pleasure i mean our children go to um they go and they do the river cleanups, for example, you know, in the various communities. They go to Bunny Hop Haven. You might know Andrea from Bunny Hop Haven, and they clean out those bunny hutches and what have you. They go to Shimbashaba and they, they shovel the horses, you know, manure and what have you. So they're really prepared to do it. We just need to manage expectations. So we can't say, join us for tea and cake, and then thrust a broom into their hand. We need to be very clear at the outset what it is that they're signing up for. But Emily, with pleasure, we would put that out on the, um, on the community engagement program. With pleasure. And if I could just ask a last follow-up question. Mm. Obviously, you know, you're, we're all um, in the NGO space. None of us are for profit. Would it be appropriate to ask us, to, I mean, to ask volunteers to assist us with fundraising activities. So, 
for example if we need if we want to host a car wash to raise funds to purchase the food is it appropriate yes. to engage volunteers for non-profits to try and raise funds 100 percent fine so if you if the uh, if i'm understanding you correctly but let's use the car wash scenario you want the the children or the volunteers to be car washers that's what you want them to do then that's no problem whatsoever absolutely okay. no problem whatsoever mm -hmm. what we would what we don't want people to do is go door to door say um, i'm supporting a, a feeding scheme in wherever the area is please will you give me money um I, I really can't be doing that um i just feel it makes our children vulnerable and if the money gets lost if it's not counted correctly if there's a concern around you say you collected a thousand rand, but you've only given me eight hundred rand. I don't want to place our, our young volunteers in a compromising situation such as that. But if they're involved in an activity which raises funds with the greatest of pleasure, um, to be, just to give you an, an example which might fit into that that um, conversation, the National Children's Fund. What they do is that they are they raise funds um, and they. You know, they, they obviously keep those funds, but they ask our young volunteers to help them shopping at Macro because they just quite simply don't have enough feet on the ground to go and do that sort of quite heavy lifting task. So our volunteers meet them at Macro on a specific day at a specific time. They get given their shopping list and hasta la vista, baby, those volunteers go off into Macro and they load up whatever it is that's on their list, take it to the, um, to the checkout till and the National Children's Fund pay for it. Our children don't get involved in any of the payment protocol, but they certainly were very involved in the collection of the of the items. So your car wash, for example, very similar to that. The children would help you wash the cars, you'll collect the money, you'll do whatever it is that needs to be done after that with pleasure. Amazing. Um, it's a great idea, actually. Yeah. It's a really great idea. <laughs> um, uh, Nanine, did you have a question? Um, or are you I'm not really a question, it's just more a statement. So Vivian does the shopping with the National Children's Fund and it's actually amazing how these kids actually go and do the shopping. Oh, I'm so, so glad to hear that. It really, oh. it's, it's amazing. And then also two years ago we did the car wash and we just put it out in the King David newsletter and we had about 50 kids come to the party. So I think with community hours, you've got to also think out of the box. Correct. Do, yeah. We, we do like to do, as to use Nanine's phrase, and it's one that we often bandy around, is we do like to try and create out of the box volunteering opportunities because pedestrian stuff doesn't really grab the attention of the you know of the youth so what i will be doing we had a wonderful wonderful response to the christmas cracker appeal um so for those people who maybe haven't seen it you know what, what are you going to do with the 3550 toilet roll inners that you've been collecting for a project that i'll get to one day during the lockdown period so i asked children to please take those toilet roll um uh, inners you know the, the the rolls and to put a, a little sweet in there so it could be those individual sucking sweets it could be a small bar well bar ones don't really work because the chocolate i'm always concerned melts but no the box smarties or what have you and a small toy to go in there um, and then to wrap those crackers and make them look wonderful we got hundreds of them donated hundreds so i'm thinking that for Valentine's Day, it might be a nice thing to do, you know, to do a care cracker for a senior citizen. Um, we've all got those small little sample size, you know, from airline travel and whatever. And, and you can buy with at not great expense, um, a little hand cream or a little tube of toothpaste or a little something um, and get the volunteers to wrap those up and we'll create, you know, um, for the either for the love of volunteering in February or care crackers for, you know, for seniors or you know Easter bunny crackers or what have you I'm just trying to think about the you know the days that are coming up in the foreseeable future um, and those you might be able to gift if you are dealing specifically with a um, 
an orphanage or a childcare centre or a senior citizen's home, if those are the kinds of things that you like, we give one hour of volunteering for, I can't remember whether it's six or eight crackers. Um, and it's lovely. It's really lovely to see because the volunteers get quite excited about making their crackers look exceptional. Um, and you've got young, one young man, Daniel, um, whose surname I won't mention, I do know from King David in Linksville. He was like, uh, uh, he was an unstoppable force of nature. He just made zillions of these things. And the photographs that his mum sent me were just enchanting. This boy, I think he's in matric, with this beautiful smile, just kind of with that calmness about him, which says, I know it looks little, but it's, I know it's going to make a difference. And I love that. So, you know, out of the box volunteering is something which is really important. Um, that, so anything that's off the wall, off the charts, um, we'd be happy to consider. Um, Nanine, I see your hand. Um, before uh, we go to you, I just want to say, Sarah, that's amazing. And I think that's a great opportunity for everyone to start thinking a little bit about um, you know, Valentine's Day. And then after that, we've got Mother's Day as well. So if you have a creative yes. idea, um, and then we can um, uh, send you that by email or um, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then Sarah, you, uh, or, or how do you decide how many hours gets allocated for that? So it's quite a difficult thing to do, but our agreement with the school is, is that if I was to apportion a cash value, which is awful and, and I hate doing it, but so if you wanted a food parcel to put, be put together, we try and make the food parcel value somewhere between 200 and 250 rand. If it's an activity like the car wash, it would be hour for hour. So you work for an hour, you, you register an hour. Um, and so I've got a whole um, schedule of, of things that, that, that we currently are using, and that's my guideline, and I'm happy to share that with you um, if, that's, you know, if, if that would be important. So one large black plastic bag of previously loved, gently worn, and beautifully laundered, we hope, clothing um, would be one volunteering hour. The difficulty comes in if people are donating sports equipment because um, as a mother of a cricketer, I know that cricket helmet, um, if I go and buy it, it's going to cost me 3,000 rand, um, but it's still only one item. Do you, you know what I'm saying? So in those kinds of instances, sometimes we would say if you donated a bat, and a helmet, then maybe you know we would look at three hours for argument's sake. So it's sometimes we, we just sit down and try and evaluate. But if you say to me, you know, that the act I mean don't we don't give hours, that's the other thing I just wanted to make absolutely clear. We don't give hours for traveling. So if it takes you three hours to drive to Bloemfontein to go and volunteer with the SPCA for one hour and it takes you three hours to drive home, you can still only log the one hour of volunteering. You may not, you know, we don't accept the, the six hours of traveling. And we have had that in an instance. So I don't know how to answer your question empirically, but what I can say is we do try and sort of frame it within that conversation in terms of the allocation of hours. Right, right. Okay, great. And and on the issue of transport, I mean, are there specific drop-off points for people or is it up to the sort of NPO or um, organization to, to get the goods to a particular place or how does that work? We prefer it that the volunteers would drop off their activities with you in particular. If it gets sent to me, for example, it very well may sit in my garage for ages or it might not get to you because somebody else might come along and say, oh, I also need a um, hundred of the meal bags. Can I just take these? And if they're not clearly marked for bet on better, for example, then you, they, they might be inadvertently picked up by another organization. So we do prefer that the volunteers deliver directly to yourselves or to the nominated address that um, that, that you have. Um, so, for example, um, if I think about Bedford View Community Police Forum, for example, um, they had a drop-off point which was actually with a guard at a uh, the boomed off area in one of the, the, the security what's well, a security guard in one of the boomed off areas so that that worked because the lady 
wasn't able she was she worked i think or she wasn't able to to take the um the, the volunteering activities in all day every day so she just had it arranged with the guard so you know we could talk about that but i would prefer that it gets delivered directly to you um for distribution okay great um we're a tiny little bit over time i hope oh, I, sorry i no no not at all i hope it's okay with everyone if we stay for a few more minutes and take a few more questions um sarah is that okay with you it's fine with me no problem at all be an absolute pleasure Okay, great. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? You can unmute yourself or put up your hand. And while we wait and see if anyone has any more questions, I think what might be a good idea, um, Sarah and um, Nanine, is um, if we maybe put together like a little guide that we can share on WhatsApp so that all the cans um, are very clear about how this works because it's quite a few steps and someone like me who's never used community hours before you know um, you know I think it, it would be great to just have like a little step-by-step -step guide um, for would, everyone to follow. Um, would you like me to do that for you would you like me just to kind of just drop you a one pager just to say this is community hours this is how they this is your role and this is how we'd like to ask you to please get the learners to you know to log their hours we have a problem often with learners saying oh last year in june i did x y and z and so now what we've had to do is you've had to say they've got a three-month window to log their hours and i think that that's more than enough i honestly honestly do i feel very sort of focused on I can't expect you as an organization to remember what happened last year in June I mean sometimes it's tough enough to remember what happened last week on Wednesday you know when you're busy there's enough that and as I keep saying to the volunteers your primary focus is not administration your primary focus is to engage with the community our focus is to make sure that the administration is correctly done um, so if I could just ask you uh, as, and this is really just a, a personal favor, really, if when the learners drop off or when the volunteers drop off their um, their projects, if you wouldn't mind just reminding them that they need to log them on community hours as a matter of urgency. Okay, so they have a three-hour window to log to log their... Three-month three month window. Oh, three three month. Month. oh, I was just about yeah. to say... Yeah. Oh no! Okay, no, no, three, I, of time. no, oh no, she <laughs> dashed home. No, she, and I then there's no thing in there. And they hate us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we try to say to people at the end of the week, when you kind of on a Sunday evening, when you're preparing for what happens next week, log everything that you that you've done during the course of this week, because you'll be ex you'll be astonished at how much you've done actually um, that you haven't even really thought about. So yeah, so if, if we could just ask them. To, to make sure that they do log those hours um, because retrofitting hours is a problem. Um, if I can just mention, thank you, Nanine. I mean, I know that you are, honestly, I, I'm sure that the rest of your team is, is just as amazing, but you have been incredible. And I ha have received your uh, WhatsApp with stationary uh, kit. And thank you very, very much. That is something that we do definitely support. So, um, the stationary box is all about previously loved, gently worn, but you know, cleaned stationery. And the one thing that we do sometimes add to that is a um, uh, to to A4 the soft A4 books um, notebooks just to to hand in as well. But this poster that you put together is lovely. Thank you very much for doing that. And that I Coke bottle. <laughs> Just three no, points. Okay. When the kids drop off at my house for the community okay. hours, I actually ask them to log on to the computer at home and verify their hours immediately. Because once strong. they are out of your house, they they forget. They, they do. They're on to the next mission in their chapter. And going back to Daniel, it's about building relationships with the kids who start bringing stuff to you. Daniel probably makes 50 meals in a bag every single week. So He's you know that lovely man. He is extraordinary. Man. He every is extraordinary. fiber of his existence is just Daniel amazing. Daniel is also head of outreach this year at Linksfield. Oh, is he? So, okay, I didn't know that. 
Yana. So he is the most amazing person. In fact, he's for orientation at Lingsfield, they're going to be doing meals in a bag. Oh, and that's all done him. through Daniel. So all I can say is when the kids start coming to drop stuff off, it's about building a relationship with those children. And by us saying to them, come, let's go lock your hours now. You communicate, it's not just coming to your drawer and just giving you the garment. They're actually coming in and getting to know you and what you're doing and what you're about. You know what, Nini, that's just, I mean, that's another star in your kind of stellar constellation. I mean, you are just really a, a leading light, and, and I'm saying that publicly because I really mean it. Um, that is such a great way. And, and the other thing is, if I can be perfectly candid, it also it kind of keeps you top of mind awareness. So when people say, oh, where shall I donate these clothes? There is only one place to go. And that's lovely because it means that you're able to service the community that you have a relationship with. So that's divine. Is this Vivian in your kitchen on the photo? Um, sorry, Driss has a yes. question in the, in the chat. Um, uh, she says, is St. Mary's in Waverley part of your program? Um, so just checking uh, because uh, I'd like my goddaughter to do community hours when she gets to grade 10. Oh, yes. bless her, yes, St. Mary's very definitely does accept the community hours um, and profile. And what I will do is they, um, they haven't signed up as a school, but I am going to re-engage with St. Mary's during this year. Um, I, I know that we've had a, a couple of conversations with them uh, with regards to how to manage um, their, their engagement specifically because of the impact on. So 100% yes, Mary's does accept the community hours um, activities. Okay, wonderful. Great. Um, are there any other questions? Please don't be shy. I know um, sometimes, you know, um, oh, we, uh, we have people who are like a little bit hesitant to talk, but please don't, don't be shy. Ask questions. Um, no question is too silly. I always say that the only question that's a ridiculous question is the one that you felt too ridiculous to ask. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, <laughs> I really, really, really don't mind. Um, I think that what, you know, again, but sometimes it is a case of sit down and have a cup of coffee and look into the, you know, into the garden and go, oh my goodness me, would this work? And if that's a question that you'd like to bomb on an email to me with the greatest of pleasure, you are so welcome. Again, it's just my name and where I work. Just keep it simple. So it's sarah at communityhours.co.za. Okay. Uh, Driss and then Emily. Hi, Sarah. Um, thanks for this. Um, really good. Um, I just wanted to find out, do you um, operate uh, overseas? Do you get people to go uh, overseas and do work? Um, because of the travel bans and the restrictions, we don't. But because of our relationship with President's Award, we are able to do that. We do have a couple of dotted line organizations that we have links with, but our, essentially our focus has been in and around South Africa. So I can certainly, if you've got people who are looking for opportunities, I can put you in contact with, uh, with some organizations, but it's not something that we actively do. Um, people keep asking me to do it, but quite honestly, I, I'm still looking for the rest. I, I should have been born one of the Rosenkovitz sex triplets because, I mean, I'm looking for the other five. They need to come and help me. <laughs> right, right. But, um, I think South Africa yeah, should be our focus. I was just finding yes. out because yes. um, I, I was in Tanzania for, for six <gasps> years. And oh, I, know, okay. I know an organization that actually brings volunteers from... Uh, America and different you know to work in Tanzania and they have a three-week program but I was just wondering whether you'd be interesting in, in actually getting to know yes. them yes please do because we do sometimes get people saying to us I've got a you know for example like the university students are only starting on the 15th of March this year yeah. um, you know so we've got these three months what am I going to do with those three months so that's certainly something that we would you know be very happy to say it comes highly recommended, personal references. Um, the problem is with overseas is, is that I'm just loath to send somebody off to an organization that hasn't been vetted. So if you know that organization and you can vouch for them in terms of the work that they do and the people that they are, then I'm happy to do that. 
there is an organization called Green Pop. Um, they're down in Neisner, and they do um, volunteering camps in the in the Neisner Forest. Um, I, I found them to be a little bit expensive. I'll be absolutely candid with you. But if you are looking for a South African working experience, they they certainly do great work. They almost um, that lovely, lovely, lovely ad. And I wish I could remember. I think it's one of the um, Insurance houses might even be some number, but that lovely gentleman who went and planted a tree every day of his life and created a forest. And um, I think that right. that's kind of part. Yeah, I love that ad. I weep every time I see it. Um, and I never remember who it's for. What is the organization called, Sarah? Sorry. Green, Green as in the color, uh, pop, P O P. And the gentleman who runs it is a gentleman by the name of Misha. Okay, great. He's, re Thanks he's relent. No, he's relentless. You're very, you're very welcome. He, he's uh, like a rottweiler. He doesn't. Let you go. He wants to put your name and number. He's definitely going to contact you all the time. But the work that they do is phenomenal. So happy thank to you recommend so much. them. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you so much. Emily has a question. And then I think um, after Emily's question, maybe we can uh, wrap up. Um, yeah, please go ahead, Emily. Sure. I'm doing a lot of talking today. Um, the I saw on the website, I mean, we're all obviously busy, but, but I saw on the website that we can also use your platform as adults if we are bored or, or I don't know, have too much time on our hands, that we can also volunteer. How does that work? So... <laughs> I'm smiling for two things. Emily, I love the fact that you are Mrs. Chattanoski. I think that you're just probably voicing the questions that many people have rolling around in their head. So please don't feel like you've got to apologize for chatting a lot. Lovely. Um, anybody can volunteer via the Community Hours website. Anybody can do that. And we have what we call unique users. And those are the people who are, um, if I can use you as an example, who are just wanting to volunteer because it's something which is part of their DNA something that they like to do, something that they want to do, and they'd like to be able to measure their impact in terms of what their, their volunteering engagement is. So quite simply, it's a, as I say, it is a subscription-based um, organization, so it's a 250 rand, including that uh, subscription on an annual basis. You literally go in and, and register as a user, and you would be able to get all the uh, you know the full access to the um, uh, to the site. You would be able to log your hours. We would be able to verify those hours for you. You would get all the you know the bells and whistles that come with the volunteering opportunities extended to the school. And we do have a number of adult volunteers um, because there's an, I'm not sure where you're based, Emily, but there's a really nice. Um, you might actually like to get hold of them. Nosh is their is their name N O S H Nosh. They um, are like a, a feeding like a, a, a soup kitchen, but they host um, lunches and probably not dinners anymore, but lunches for indigent people in the Randburg area. Um, and it might be something you know it, it, that you'd like to get involved in. And what they ask volunteers to do is it help prepare the food they ask volunteers to be waiters or waitresses to serve the food so um, frequently what they do is in the park they set out tables um, to try and give the indigent people a sense of a sense of respectability that sort of says I too deserve to sit at a table I too deserve to eat with a knife and fork I too deserve to have someone care for me, even if it is only for the briefest moment in time. Um, so those kinds of organizations, um, because they prepare food in the morning, often on, only, and in inverted commas only, have adult volunteers working with them you know, in the mornings because lots of the learners are in school, whether that's remotely or, or, or physically. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot you can do. Amazing. Um, absolutely love the consideration and um, you know the fact that everyone deserves to um, have a dignified experience mm -hmm. and yeah absolutely love that um, Sarah thank you so much for this amazing session it's really inspiring and it's been really really helpful and we really appreciate your time and coming to um, speak with us and um, I think we'll also be collaborating you know as Harting Together and um, maybe the other um, 
Cape Town and Eastern Cape together will also um, maybe do this, but we can we can also come up with something um, like uh, Nanine's uh, stationary idea and, and share that uh, across the network and can some people add the details, um, you know, if they want to use that or um, yeah. they can come up with their own ideas. Um, so we're really looking forward to, um, you know, partnering with you more closely on that. And yeah, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much to the CANS as well um, and to everyone who joined and, and made the time today. Um, we really appreciate it. Well, from, from my side, thank you so much, number one, for hosting me today and for giving me the opportunity to chat with you all. But I think mostly I want to say thank you for providing the, the distribution um, of, of all of the projects that our volunteers have put together and so, so much more than that. I don't think that, um, I don't really know where you guys put your wings at the end of the evening and how you sleep because you are in actual fact angels and we are very grateful to know you and to work with you. So thank you from all of us to all of you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, okay, everyone, we'll be sharing some more details and, and um, uh, uh, like useful um, materials about um, uh, community hours. And yeah, have a wonderful day and thanks again for joining. Super. I'm going to leave you in case there's, there's meeting stuff that you need to do. Please don't think I'm being rude. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Give me a whistle anytime or, as I say, please feel free at any stage to drop me an email. Have a good day and Cheers take care. Thank you. Okay, then. Bye.